If you've never read a Black Panther comic before, or you're just looking for something to get you hyped for the new movie, then this is a video for you. Woof woof! Hey guys, it's me Marcus aka The Mad Dog and we're back with another video. Now the first title that I'm going to recommend is probably the strongest one that I could give you because it's going to be Black Panther by Christopher Priest. This is part of the Marvel Knights imprint where a lot of their characters were allowed to have darker and more mature storylines that were still mostly connected to the rest of the Marvel Universe. So it's similar to titles like Daredevil by Kevin Smith and also The Punisher by Garth Ennis which I reviewed last year and I really enjoyed. It is quite dense and a lot of the art hasn't aged well but it does go on for years and it incorporates a lot of what everybody already loves about the Black Panther mythology. And this was also the run that introduced the Dora Milaje. And even though I've watched the film a couple of times, I still don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But this is often seen as a reinvention for this character, and it's also just seen the Black Panther outside of Wakanda. So if you did want a Black Panther series that you can get stuck into, there is a fresh start, but at the same time it doesn't have that Silver Age wackiness, and it takes itself seriously and is intended for a more mature modern audience, then this would probably be the one for you, and it is getting a first volume of an omnibus later this year. Actually, it's Marvel we're talking about. It's probably been delayed since I filmed this video. Next up, and if if you wanted an even more modern one, I would definitely recommend Black Panther by Tadashi Coates. He's also a name that you're probably going to hear crop up a few more times in this video. And his run ran from 2016 all the way up until 2021, so if you wanted something that you could really sink into and just explore this world and this character and have a lot of time with them and have this massive overarching plot, then this would be my number one recommendation. I didn't feel like this exactly hit the ground running, it is a bit slower in starting, but it's because it really wants to explore the concepts and the characters it's working with. And then when you reach a certain point, this really starts running with pace. It wasn't just about Black Panther, it was also about his world to the point where it felt like that was a character in this series. It even started as a new series again in 2018 if you wanted to just jump into that, where the focus is even greater on Wakanda and it has this sci-fi vibe that involves the multiverse. And I've said this in a few of me where to start, but if you look at the run that's coming out alongside a major movie, then that is probably a great jumping on point for new readers. And this is no exception, so as long as you know the basics of this character, then you can jump right into this. And it's quite fortunate because he is getting an omnibus of the full run, which you can already order from the channel's sponsor, Organic Price Books. They've got great packaging, fast shipping, and amazing customer services. And if you use code woof woof, you'll get $2 off your order. And if you're ordering three or more books and you want them to be delivered together, make sure you use code woof woof, ship it together for 5% off your entire order. Don't worry, you can just copy and paste them from the description down below and you can use these codes as many times as you like. Another code series that I'm going to recommend is going to be The Rise of the Black Panther. Because maybe you don't have a clue who this character is, in which case this six issue mini series would be perfect for you. It isn't too connected to the more modern day stuff because he is looking at his early years when he did take up the mantle of being King of Wakanda and also the Black Panther, but it does still incorporate a lot of characters from the main Marvel universe in case it was that you did want to see a Black Panther title that also features Namor. And it's not going to take up too much of your time if you did want something to test the waters with before you jumped into one of these longer runs. And it was also released at a time when more people were trying to read Black Panther comics, so if it was good enough then a couple of years ago, it's definitely good enough now if you don't even have a clue about who T'Challa is. Actually, I might as well stick with some of the other series that were coming out at this time because I'm going to be recommending The World of Wakanda. And World of Wakanda is great if you're more interested in how that nation is run and also about the Dora Milaje. Again, still not sure if I'm pronouncing that correct. And maybe that's what interests you most about this character. And then after you've read this and you've got a bit more of the understanding of the political landscape, you could then maybe jump into some of these other titles on this list. And like I said, the focus is more on the army and infrastructure aspect of this country so if that was something that you were looking for or maybe you wanted a female centric Black Panther title that doesn't revolve around Shuri which honestly I can't really blame you for then this might take that box for you but maybe you like a more classic style of storytelling in which case I would recommend maybe checking out the first couple of issues where Black Panther appeared in the Fantastic Four and when I do me where to start series I'm often skeptical on including the first appearance of a character in the list because times have changed the characters evolved from then and they might not have figured out who the character really is. But because he wasn't introduced in his own series from the offset, you do actually learn a lot about this character from the way that he interacts with the other Fantastic Four. Of course, yes, he does fight with them because that's just the rule anytime two superheroes first see each other, but there is still quite a lot of charm to this, and even though there are many, many words in this book, it's not that long that it's really going to take up much of your time. Speaking of which, in the 70s, Black Panther finally got his own title that was created by Jack Kirby. Again, you still might not think that this is the exact same Black Panther that you might have seen in the movies, but they had taken some time since the character appeared in Fantastic Four to figure out who he is and what he's really about. Jack Kirby didn't stay on the title for long, unfortunately, but his style is just one of those that others don't really compare to. And there is something fun about reading these early series of a character to figure out exactly where they started 
adding things. So because it isn't a massively long run, if it was that you did like that Silver Age style of storytelling, then you might want to check this out. My next suggestion might make it sound like I'm now just going through every Black Panther run in order, but I'm going to recommend Black Panther, Panther's Quest. And yeah, I feel like I said Panther way too many times in that sentence. This was done by Don McGregor and the legendary Gene Colan, and when I asked you guys on Instagram which Black Panther titles I should put on this list, you overwhelmingly said this one. And I checked it out, and I do have to agree that this would be great if you're looking for something where they were starting to really figure out who this character is. Issue-wise, it does still take place in the same series that was started by Jack Kirby, but this still managed to stand out, and it felt like the first time where they were really trying to start doing a serialised story with this character. And it might not be the best for a younger reader, but if you do like the stories that were coming out at this time, then this would be the one that's probably best for you. After that, I'm going to have to recommend Black Panther by Reginald Hudlin. Now, this was the first major series for this character that I got involved in, and I absolutely loved it. And people might disagree with me on this pick, and I might just have the nostalgia glasses on, but I loved how this wasn't afraid of being incorporated into the Marvel Universe. Because before this, it does often feel that Black Panther is just in Wakanda doing his own thing. Yeah, sure, he might appear in an Avengers title or a Fantastic Four somewhere along the way, but through this event, I got different perspectives on the Marvel events that were happening at the time, such as Civil War, and also House of M, which I recently went back and did a review of, and I absolutely loved. And most importantly, this one gave us the marriage of T'Challa and Storm. So if that's an aspect of this character that you really enjoyed, then this is probably the go-to run that you should pick up. And I just feel like this had a bit of everything in it for me. It did have the stuff going on at Wakanda, it did focus on T'Challa, it did also focus on Shuri later on, and it might not be the best run that's ever existed, but it even had Black Panther officially joining the Fantastic Four for a little bit. So I think it's underrated, and I think this would be a great run for anybody who likes the Marvel Universe already and knows a lot about what was going on during that time, and you don't want to feel like Black Panther just doesn't exist there. Another one that's a bit out of left field, but I'm going to go with Black Panther vs. Deadpool. But let's just get one thing straight, not all comics are created to be taken seriously. And if you ever want that in the Marvel Universe, you're pretty safe if Deadpool's included in the title. And you might be somebody who just wants something dumb and fun that can get you introduced into this character, and you might already be a fan of Wade Wilson. Sure, yes, just reading the title would make you think that this might be some kind of offshoot of Avengers vs. X-Men, but it's a dumb storyline and I'm just all for it. And for as daft as this might be, it still recognises the core of these characters. And there's no harm in learning about one character by piggybacking off another that you might already know. And I don't think it's going to be relevant to many people, but this might be your gateway into Black Panther. Because it still features a lot of his mythology, there is some interesting developments for Wakanda, and I can't stress this enough, it's only five issues long and it's just dumb fun. And sometimes with comics, that's all that you really need to get started. Another good short crossover series would be Captain America Black Panther Flags of Our Father. Yeah, it's Reginald Hudlin again, but this is like the polar opposite dynamic to the Deadpool book. It's also set during World War II, so if you didn't want the baggage of the rest of the Marvel Universe, but you still wanted some familiar faces, then this four issue miniseries would be perfect for you. You get to see Cap and T'Challa meet for the first time, form an unlikely alliance, and also fight on the front lines. It's just a fun story with a lot of heart to it, so if you're already a fan of Captain America, then you could get introduced to Black Panther this way. And if you like the style of storytelling, then you could jump into the rest of Hudlin's run. Okay, my next recommendation might get me a bit of backlash, but I'm gonna go with Black Panther, The Man Without Fear. Maybe I'm showing me bias here as an absolutely massive Daredevil fan, like I've already done a where to start on him if you're interested, but because I was already following Matt Murdock, I picked up this series, and I think this was the reason why I went back and read Hudlin's run. I can't really remember now. But in the wake of Shadowland and the bastardization of Daredevil, Hell's Kitchen needed a new protector. And that's where T'Challa took over. Looking back on this now, this should have felt much more bizarre to me, but at a time when I didn't have much experience with Black Panther, this was really decent. Luke Cage had a great spotlight in this, Black Panther ended up going against Kraven the Hunter at one point, and if you wanted a Black Panther title that was set away from the politics of Wakanda and you get to see him in a different environment, then this might be worth giving it a go. And with my Where to Start series, I try to cater for as many different people as possible because it's not going to be a one-size-fits-all approach to getting into a character, and you might be somebody who, like me, is an event apologist, and I would recommend maybe trying out Doom Wall. Now, fair warning, this isn't going to be a suggestion for everybody, and I do think that they probably should have renamed this Dumb Wall. And if you do like comic events, then this might be one of the best options for you because it was one of the first that put Black Panther at the centre. Again, it's just dumb fun. Doctor Doom wages war on Wakanda, he picks up just after Hudlin left the series, so you've still got Shuri in the mantle of Black Panther, but T'Challa does still feature in it, and you've got a lot of other appearances from other Marvel Universe characters, so if you aren't afraid of jumping into something a bit blind, and you just wanted to be entertained, then I do think that this actually would be a good recommendation. However, you might want to see Black Panther in a group setting, in which case there are a number of Avengers books that you could read. The one that I'm mostly going to recommend is the new Avengers that was written by Jonathan Hickman, 
He does also feature quite heavily in Jason Aaron's run, but I've learnt my lesson from recommending that in a Where to Start video. But the Jonathan Hickman stuff was great because he still understood who this character was, and it's clear that he was setting up Wakanda for something bigger. So despite it being an Avengers title, you're going to learn a lot about T'Challa and Wakanda, but still have those characters that you might already be familiar with. I'm sure there's probably going to be other group books that I could have recommended, but that's going to be my honourable mention. Any Black Panther book that might get you into this character and into comics a bit more is the one that you should jump on with. There's countless other titles that I haven't recommended and it's not because they're not a great jumping on point but maybe I just haven't checked them out yet. But this list is not exhaustive, it's just the ones that I've already read and I would recommend that you check out. And in saying that, my last recommendation is going to be the ongoing series that's being written by John Ridley. I started reading this because I liked his work that he did on Batman during Future State and he's got a lot of experience with screenwriting that really gives this run a cinematic feel to it. You do also get some appearances from other characters in the Marvel Universe like Captain America and Thor and hopefully this doesn't pan out to be an absolutely awful run so that if anybody comes back to this video years from now they can just absolutely slate it even though there's normally already a reason that you can slate with videos anyway. But yeah if you're in your comic shop and you see the most recent series don't be afraid to pick it up in single issues because it is very easy to jump into. But that's the video hopefully it helps someone out and you enjoy the new Black Panther movie but until next time just make sure that you stay safe and stay mad all you dogs. Woof woof. See you at the next video.